Hello, I am Pam Holliday, Manager of Surgery Service at Women's and Children's Hospital. If you are watching this video, your child has been scheduled for surgery here at our facility. We are proud to welcome you and your family and want to give you a preview of what to expect the day of your child's surgery. My mission is to welcome you and your family as you arrive in the main lobby to determine how I can best assist you and to guide you to where you need to go. I'm the nurse liaison here in the waiting room. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns while you're waiting for your family member. You'll receive a number on a card that appears on our tracking board. This is a number only you will know and it will identify your child's surgical room. Your child's name will not appear on the board, but your number will. When your child goes to the operating room, you can expect a slight delay before receiving your first update. The surgical team will be very busy initially, caring for your child and preparing for the surgery to begin. But it is our goal to update you as soon as possible and continue to keep you informed throughout the surgical process. If you would like more detailed update other than what the tracking board provides, please let me know and I can call or go to the OR and check on your family member. I'm here for you if you have any questions. When you arrive in the pre-op area, we will first take your child's weight and temperature. Then we will go to a room where we will take other vital signs such as the blood pressure, the pulse rate, and the oxygen level and prepare your child for surgery. We usually like for your child to change into a hospital gown or pajamas and depending on the type of surgery scheduled, he or she may need to wash down with antibacterial wipes. This is the area where the surgical, anesthesia, and OR teams will meet you and your child. You will be asked many of the same questions while in this area by us and the different teams. This is done on purpose to verify that everyone who is involved has the same information about your child and what is being done today. You will receive a phone call from the nurse the day or so prior to surgery to discuss your child's health history for anesthesia. Please listen very carefully to the instructions and write them down as needed. One very important instruction to follow is that your child is not to have food. A special time for drinking clear liquids prior to arrival will be given. Not following these rules may result in your child's surgery being canceled or postponed for safety reasons. You may receive an additional phone call if your child's surgery time has changed. Hi, I'm Erin, the child life specialist that usually works in the surgery department here. As you know, a day in surgery is very different than a typical day for children. My role is to help prepare your child for surgery in a way that he or she can understand, as well as provide support for the transition to the operating room. While this support looks different for each patient, my goal is to help your child cope in a positive way throughout their surgery visit. Hello, I am Dr. Craig Weldon, Chief of Pediatric Anesthesia here at Women and Children's Hospital. I, or one of my colleagues, will meet with you on the day of your child's surgery to make sure that he or she is adequately prepared for surgery, both physically and psychologically. We want to know if your child has any new medical problems especially recent cold symptoms, cough, fever, or difficulty breathing. Should your child develop these symptoms of a respiratory illness in the days before surgery, please call the hospital and talk to one of our preoperative nurses. We may need to reschedule the surgery to give your child time to recover. Preparing your child psychologically for their surgical experience should begin with you at home with a conversation about the upcoming surgery. You should be reassuring but honest in discussing this with your child. Children understand things based on their developmental level and age. The younger the child, the closer to the event you should prepare them. More ideas and age-appropriate suggestions can be found on the website. Search for your child's hospital stay or preparing your child for surgery. General tips include to listen, be honest, use short, simple terms to explain things, Encourage questions and expression of fears. Let your child know that having to go to the hospital does not mean they have done anything wrong. Explain that he or she will have special medicine to help their body not be awake during surgery and that he or she will wake up when the procedure is over. Reassure them that if something hurts, there are ways to help the pain, including medicine, relaxation, and distraction. Emphasize that the hospital stay is temporary and focus on what your child will be able to do when they go home. In addition, a coloring book explaining the day of surgery can be printed from the website link. If you have any questions or want additional ways to prepare and support your child before, during, and after surgery, 
please call Child Life at the number listed below. Your child's anesthesiologist and our child life specialist will help you and your child on the day of surgery by explaining what will happen in the operating room and providing coping techniques to help with the transition to the operating room. For younger children, we frequently administer a sedative medication to help reduce their anxiety, go to the operating room with the anesthesia team, and accept the anesthesia mask without fear. The mask will be filled with anesthetic gas, which will allow your child to painlessly breathe themselves to sleep. We will then start an IV so that we can give fluids, antibiotics, pain medicines, anti-vomiting medicines, and other anesthetic medicines. In an effort to empower your child, we try to allow them to make decisions regarding his or her care. Children are able to choose between bubble gum and cherry scents for their mask. In general, we expect teenagers to have an IV placed before going to the operating room. We can then give some sedative medicine through the IV to help the patient relax before leaving their family. A nurse anesthetist or a resident physician working with the anesthesia doctor are involved in every anesthetic. We work together as a team and at least one of us will be present at all times to care for your child during the operation. Please let us know if your family has any history of reactions to anesthetics. This is important information for us to know as it may change the way we provide the anesthesia in order to be safe. Keeping your child safe is our most important job on the day of surgery. We look forward to meeting you and caring for your child. I'm a registered nurse in the operating room. During surgery, a nurse like myself will be involved in care for your child in many different ways. My biggest responsibility is to help maintain a comfortable, safe environment for the surgical team and most importantly, for my patient. I'm a certified registered nurse anesthetist, a CRNA. This means I'm an advanced practice nurse specialized in anesthesia. And as Dr. Weldon mentioned earlier, I work with the anesthesiologist to care for your child and provide anesthesia during the operation. Whereas the anesthesiologists typically have more than one room to monitor, CRNAs and anesthesia residents remain in one room only so you can be assured that your child will be monitored and cared for the entire time during surgery. After the surgery is finished, we will give report and turn care of your child over to the recovery room nurse. I'm a surgical technician, although some of us also answered as surgical technologist or scrub nurse. One of us will be present during your child's surgery and will be dressed in a sterile gown and gloves. Our job is to assist the surgeons in any way possible, as well as provide a safe and caring environment for your child during the surgery. I'm one of the nurses in the post-anesthesia care unit, or PACU. I, or one of my co-workers, will be taking care of your child and will be at your child's bedside at all times. After surgery, when your child is ready for you to join them, you will be asked by waiting room staff to come to PACU. We ask that only one parent or guardian be present and no young children. Please keep your cell phone on silent. No cameras, videos, or photos are allowed for your privacy and the privacy of other patients. No food or drinks are allowed. When you see your child, do not try to wake them up. It will be better for your child to wake up as the medications wear off. Your child may still require oxygen. He or she may have pain, upset stomach, sore throat, itchy nose, shivering, or blurred vision. These are normal due to anesthesia medications and a type of surgery. Medication will be given as needed. Your child may be in the PACU for up to two hours. Everyone recovers differently. When your child has recovered and pain is under control, it is time to leave the PACU. If being admitted, you and your child will be moved to a hospital room. If going home, you will both return to the area you were before surgery, where a nurse in this area will give you discharge instructions. We all understand that this is a difficult time for you and your family, and our goal is to provide the best possible care we can for you and your child. On behalf of all of our staff here, we want to wish your child a speedy recovery, and thank you for choosing Women's and Children's Hospital.